Okay, principles of engineering. This is gonna be our little cheat sheet on the different types of motors and sensors that go along with our VEX equipment. Let's go for, notice there's three sections. There's a analog section, there's a digital section, and then there's a motor section. And this motor section, notice it's kind of got some things that aren't motors. We'll, we'll get into that later. Let's talk about the analog ones first. These are the ones that on the Cortex you're gonna be plugging into the analog sensor. This one is a line tracker or a line follower. It's got a sensor right here and you want to make sure that you put this really close to a surface and it will follow different color variations. Usually you want to use like a, a bright piece of tape or something and it will actually, you can program it to follow those lines and move up and down. So these are line trackers or line followers. The next thing is this is a light sensor and it will pick up the amount of light that's coming in to the uh, object itself. So if you have a piece of, uh, if you have an object obstructing it, the sensor will record a different value than if you have light actually coming in. If you have a brighter light, obviously that number gets higher. If you have a softer light or no light, this value gets lower and lower. So you can actually program your microcontroller to do things based on the behavior of what light is around it. Uh, these are really useful for like, um, for example, the um, light switches that automatically turn on whenever somebody walks in the room. Uh, these things are these things are based off of that. So you can have some of those light sensors. This is a potentiometer, and you can kind of see that there is a drive shaft uh, spot in there. It's kind of like a rectangle, and this drive shaft goes in a specific way, and you can only turn this a specific value. So if you turn this any further than I think about 270 degrees ish. Uh, it might be less than that, but you'll feel it actually try to fight you on it. Uh, it's highly recommended that you don't use a motor that spins around and around and around with this because even if you can program the motor to start and stop at these points, if you mess up in the programming, your motor can literally just rip these potentiometers to shreds. This has a variable resistor on in the inside, which means that as you twist this around, the resistance inside the object gets greater or smaller, which will cause it to trigger certain things based on your programming. It gets the electricity going through it uh, through the positive and the negative lead and the data cable will tell you the resistance values as it goes through. So you can use this as well. All three of these things go in the analog section on the Cortex. Let's go for digital next. So the digital uh, we have a push button and the push button has one of two values on or off and in the programming sense, that's either gonna be zero or one. So we have two options here, either closed or open. And we have the black, red, and white. So that's a three wire as well. This is gonna go in our sensor connection. Um, the exact same thing, just built a little bit differently, is the limit switch. And a limit switch works by having something try to press up against it, and it makes that clicking sound. Okay, and you can have this thing programmed to either be on or off. Okay, on or off. There are only two versions here. There, there is no like in-between value. When you hear that click, that's the difference between one and zero. That's on or off. So that's another digital switch. This is called a quadrature encoder or a rotation sensor. And you stick the drive shaft in here and as it rotates around, it has a, um, there's a wheel on the inside and it counts the number of rotations that happens inside that wheel. This is a digital sensor, so it actually calculates that value. You have to have two inputs for it. So whenever you wire it inside the, the cortex, you have to make sure that you have both wires plugged in side by side to each other and I'll have to look up specifically which one goes with which. Uh, the same thing happens with the rangefinder. Um, so this one kind of works using echolocation. There's two speakers right here and these uh, one of the speakers will emit sound and that sound will kind of bounce off. It kind of works like a bat or a dolphin. It will hit and then it will bounce back and it records the difference between the timing it receives, the, when, the timing between when it sends the sound and then whenever it receives the sound again and it gives you an estimation of the amount of distance that you have. And once again with this one, it has an input and it has an output uh, line that goes with it. So you're gonna have to plug in both the output 
and the input along with it. So you gotta make sure that both of these are plugged into the Cortex side by side to each other and we'll have to look up the documentation to see which one goes first and which one goes second. Uh, but which one goes first and second is important. Let's go to the motors. So this is our basic VEX 393 motor and it works with just a two wire connection or you can hook a encoder up to it as well if you want to program it to use different values so you can program the motor to use different speeds. I would highly recommend that you always use the encoders if possible because we're starting with programming so we might as well actually use these motors to uh, program. Okay, the drive shaft goes in here and then we'll have to use these uh, brass small screws to go along with that. These are smaller than the regular screws so whenever you try to screw them in, obviously you've got to make sure that you're using the brass tip screws or it just won't work. Something that's really close to a motor but not the exact same, see the difference between these two? Uh, one of them is significantly smaller than the other one. This one is called a servo and the difference between a servo and a motor is a servo will only go to a specific range of values. So it will only go from like down to about here to up to about here. So whenever you program it, this thing will not be programmed to go around and around and around and around. This thing is gonna be programmed to either go like down and up like this. Okay, so whenever you're using the potentiometer, uh, the potentiometer is a really good thing to use with the servo because the servo can only go in certain places, so you can actually program it to go to those certain places using the potentiometer or tell it to have like some em emergency stop or, or if you need it to go to specific locations. This is not a motor and this is not a servo, this is a flashlight. When you plug this thing in, it will actually, you know, emit light from the LED bulbs in there. Um, even though it's not really a motor, uh, you have to plug these into the motor part of the Cortex in order to actually get it to function. And we'll talk about the coding for it later, but these are all of the basic VEX parts that we're gonna be using whenever we program our stuff. And we're gonna have to make sure that these get plugged into the right locations. So potentiometer, line follower, light sensor goes in the analog spots. Buttons, range finders, and the quadrature encoders, they go in the digital components and servos, motors, and flashlights, those go in the mot motor components. Uh, that's all that I got for you guys for the moment. Have a great day and we'll talk later.